All right, howdy everybody. So I'm getting ready to uh, to rivet these bottom skins on, and here's the plan. I've already got everything drawn on here as far as labeling the rivets. So I've got them labeled which ones are three and a half in length, which ones are four, which ones are four and a half. I've got that all laid out on here like I've done the other skins, the top skins. I've got my blue tape on the holes that do not get any rivets. Obviously I got this first skin hung and you can see it's, it's only Coleco on the top because I have to reach up underneath here. So the plan is um, <clears throat> I am basically going to reach in through lightning holes, reach up underneath, reach in through here, whatever I can reach into to get to these rivets. That's what I'm going to do. So. My plan is to rivet in the same fashion that I always rivet. I'm going to try to start somewhere in the middle of the skin up here at the top. And I'm going to work my way out and I'm going to work my way down. I want to make sure that I can get to these rivets up here first. Because as you come down and you start to rivet the skin in place, you're not going to be able to move it out of the way to reach. So I basically want to try to get this row first maybe a couple starting to come down and work my way out and down. That's kind of the plan. We'll see how it goes once I actually get into it, but um, I'm going to time lapse the rest of it and um, hopefully um, it will be some benefit. All right, so let me get cracking and we'll see what gives. Howdy everyone. So that was a real short time lapse. Just kind of showing the basics of what I'm trying to get done here. But I'll point out a couple of things. I, I stopped the camera because I had to go do something. So I figured since I stopped it, I might as well come back and talk to you a little bit before going back into another time lapse. So as you saw, we were trying to figure out the best way to do this and um, reaching up underneath blind, if you will, and just kind of feeling around, that doesn't work for me. That, that was absolutely horrible. So of course, as you saw, the, the way that I'm going to do it is to actually pull this back and stick my head up underneath here. That is so much better because I can actually see what I'm doing. And I also ran a light, so now I've got a light up inside here. Again, with added light and actually sticking my head up and being able to see what I'm working on, it, it's great. It's not the fastest process in the world, because as you saw, my wife, she's got to stand up on a stool because she's a little short. So you have to pull a Clico, you have to reach back, grab the rivet, put the rivet in, and then she's got to kind of move out of the way a little bit so I can get up underneath, and then I got to get set, and then we communicate, and the rivet gets set, start all over again. So it's not a speedy process, but I think once we get these little things figured out, it will go a little bit quicker. And of course, as you, after you get this top row finished and you start working your way down on these rivets, it should get easier because you don't have to crawl up underneath as much. The other thing, of course, you'll notice I'm wearing a shirt, and uh, that's not only for your protection. Um, I wanted to wear something long sleeve because I knew I was going to be reaching up underneath here. And, uh, you know, D bird or not, these edges are not, they're very thin, and they'll reach out and grab you if you're not careful. So I just put on a long sleeve shirt. The other thing is that the instructions tell you 
once in a while to take the skin and Coleco it back in place in a couple of different various areas just to make sure that it's still lining up with these other rivet holes. I've done that a couple times, but you know, after you get a row of rivets in, you know, at that point, what are you going to do? You know, I, I've, I've got probably a good 15, 20 rivets in here now. And if I put this down and none of these down here line up, what am I going to do? I'm going to drill all these out, reposition it. How do you reposition it? So you can do it, I guess, as a check, but I don't, I don't think there's any real point behind it. Because like I said, once you get some rivets in place, it's kind of locked down. It's not going to shift. If you have enough clecos in it to start with, it's not going to shift. You probably saw, since I have to pull the skin out, I just went ahead and clecoed this long edge and this long edge. So it's it's really not going to shift. I had actually had clecos in most of it, and then I just removed these and left these in place. And, as you saw, even after it's clecoed, you still move it around. You still have to bend it and, and work your way up underneath it. So I just don't see how you're going to really lock it down. The only way it gets locked into place is once you start riveting. And I believe that with the way that Vans has their holes pre-drilled, they match. They always match up. Once you start laying in the rivets, it's just going to work its way into where it needs to be anyway. So. So that's kind of where we're going. Um, I'm going to get my wife back out here and uh, we're going to get reset and uh, we'll fire up some time lapse and see if we can get this skin done. day um, almost finished with this skin you can see the clecos that are in it basically got a 
rivet from here down and this skin will be finished. Uh, like you saw in the videos, this row here, this is the rear spar row of rivets. These are the most difficult to get to. And the rivets along that spar that are between these wing walk ribs, these suck. I mean, it's, it's just horrible to get in here. But once you start, once you get this row in place and you start working your way down the individual ribs, it gets easier, obviously, because you don't have to reach up in there quite as far. But as you continue to rivet, you can't pull the skin out quite as far either. So there's a little bit of a trade-off there. But you'll get to a point where you come down far enough that you can reach everything, either through the access holes, through the lightning holes of the rib, through here, or through the various lightning holes through these ribs here. Once you get to that point, once you come down far enough, and again, you can kind of tell in the video where I make the switch from reaching up underneath, at some point, I go ahead and clico the skin all the way down, and I do all the riveting through the lightning holes and through the access holes. Once you get to that point, and you're comfortable that you can reach everything, Go ahead and click over the skin in place, and then do all your riveting through the holes. So that's what I had started yesterday, but um, I had to quit and call the day because I was just too sore. I mean, my legs were killing me from holding myself up and up and down, up and down, so I, I quit for the night. So now, as you can see, the skin is still clicked in place. I can reach the rest of these through the lightning holes, through the access holes. We're going to knock this out today, and then I believe we'll start on this next skin. Now I had my push-pull tube in here, I had to take it out because it was in the way reaching in here to get this bottom row of rivets. So that's now out, finish that up, start on this skin, it will be the same procedure, reach up underneath, do this row of rivets first, start working my way down the ribs. When I get low enough on the ribs and I'm comfortable that I can reach what I need to reach through, through the access hole, I guess at that point I can rivet it down, although I don't know how I'm going to reach these. I guess I can't. I'll still have to reach these rivets in here from underneath, but I'll cross that bridge when I get to it. So let me, uh, let me finish my wardrobe and uh, we'll get cranking on this.
All right, so everyone, finally got that first skin riveted on, and it was a real pain. Now, I am not a very savvy riveter to begin with, so this was a real challenge for me, reaching up and around and basically riveting somewhat blind. Um, so it was a challenge. However, you may have noticed... When we started doing these very bottom rivets here, I switched over to doing the riveting myself. I did both the gun and the bucking bar to do this bottom row here. And I found that to be easier because with my wife riveting, I was trying to reach through here and reach back through here completely blind. And just by feel, trying to figure out where that bucking bar needs to be and these nut plates for these screws here in the leading edge, the nut plates for these are a little bit in the way. And then you've got this edge here of the spar kind of gets in the way. And for me, it was a little bit difficult to tell if the bucking bar was resting on a rivet, if it was resting on this edge, if it was resting on one of these nut plates. And I couldn't gauge how I was holding it and if it was at an angle. But as soon as I took hold of the, the rivet gun itself and I held it in place, for some reason it just made it easier for me to reach in with the bucking bar and figure out exactly where it needed to be and then, and then do the riveting. And I also noticed when I reached in here blind, one-handed, the bucking bar would move all over the place. I didn't have control when my wife was bucking. But with me holding on to the... To the uh, the rivet gun and the bucking bar, it's almost like I could push them against each other a little bit and I just had more control. So if you're having issues riveting down here, you may consider trying just to do the riveting yourself rather than having somebody help you with it because you can reach those with uh, by yourself. So just a note, just something that I noticed because when I had done like the fuel tanks and the top skins of the wings, I was reaching up underneath the skins way up toward the nose and I was doing blind riveting, but I was doing everything myself. I was I had the gun and the bucking bar. So I knew that I had blind, what I call blind bucking before and I couldn't figure out why it was being so difficult today. Like I said, as soon as I grabbed the rivet gun, it was pretty good. So... Again, very tedious and uh, took a while, but there it is, and it actually turned out quite well. So now I'm moving on to the second skin, which is larger than the first one. I've got it clecoed in place. I, I cleco it in place, and then I come back and I do my, my row of clecos here. These will stay. This is where I'm going to start, and then I've got this little row of clecos here. And those are also going to stay. But I like to rib, I, I like to stage the skin, if you will, with clecos to get it aligned. And then I put my runs in and those will stay. Now I'm confident I could take these few clecos out to relax the skin. And it's not going to move that much because it's, it's held in place through here. So it's going to be the same process as before. I'm going to Take these clecos out. I'm going to relax the skin and then I will be reaching up underneath and my wife will be doing the riveting. When we get to a point as we start to work our way down the ribs after this run is complete, when we start working our way down, when, they, when we get to the point where I think I can reach everything without having to go underneath, then I'll go ahead and cleco the skin completely in place. I don't know if that's going to be uh, a possibility with this bigger skin. I don't know if I can get away with reaching in only from the ends or through a lightning or a uh, an access hole. I don't know if I can get to everything, but we'll get there when we get there. So my plan again is to rivet this top line first by reaching underneath, start working my way down on each individual rib, when I get low enough, I get to a point where I feel comfortable. I can reach everything without having to go under the skin. I'll clico the wing completely in place and then finish the riveting. 
I've already test, did a test run on my access cover here with the pedo tube or with the pedo blade. And I verified that I can, in fact, get that on and off with the skin in place. I had, it, I had the skin Clico just like you see it here. And I'm able to get the cover plate with the pedo blade attached out and disconnected, um, which is how it is now. It's basically just in here by the wires. I've got the actual static and pressure tube disconnected. But I am able to work this out through the hole, put those uh, pedo or the pressure and static pressure lines on it, and then put it in place. So I've already verified that before I riveted the skin on. So we're ready to rock and roll here. I'm gonna put this back on time-lapse. I'm gonna get my girl out here and we're gonna do some more riveting. 